sitting in the back and joining us today. He is an instrumental member of Highlands County who is working very faithfully to ensure that people are able to have affordable housing. We want to say welcome to Roxy Madison, who we have watched grow up over the years, who is now our Barbizon model, and just looking so wonderful. Roxy, June, Roxy Madison, it is great to have watched you grown up. And you may or may not realize, but we have a queen in our presence this week. Carneed has received a Woman of Excellence Award that was bestowed upon her yesterday in Miami. It's a, amen, amen. So, we talk every week about justice, kindness, and humility, and I think Carney took the humble part a little too far because she didn't really let us know soon enough that she was receiving this award, and I don't think she herself realized the magnitude of this award she received. It was something that was given to Christians from throughout the state, women of different backgrounds, and Carney, we are just so proud of you for representing Christ, for representing Ridge Area SDA, and representing Emmanuel. And thank you for the wonderful ministry that you do. Yes. Amen. 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 We'd like to say happy birthday this week. A lot of birthdays for some reason. Happy birthday to Gail Benedict. Happy birthday to Paul Menier. Happy birthday to John Hamlin and to Doreen Stokes. Happy birthday to Monique, and happy birthday to Nancy Beatty. We want to say happy anniversary to Lee and Melrose. We want to lift up today after worship. We have an absolutely delicious brunch that is being served. There's going to be at least two different types of breakfast casseroles. There's going to be cinnamon rolls. There's going to be fruit. There's going to be at least two different types of quiches that are being served. We're simply just asking $8 per person. If you're not able to make the $8 donation, please stay afterwards and give whatever you can. And next week is a very special worship service. Not only is our regional conference minister, Reverend Latrell Harrison, joining us, it is also per capita Sunday. That's the Sunday in which we ask everyone who's a member of the church to bring in their $15 donation that goes towards the Florida Conference so they can do their ministry statewide and nationally. 
But next week is also our third annual Percussive Palm Sunday service. If you remember when we were in the dark days of COVID and everyone was feeling down, we said we need to do something with our hands to get rid of all these emotions. So next Sunday, bring in any kind of instrument you have that makes a sound. It could be drums, it could be maracas, it could be castanets, it could be a coffee can that you put some rocks or pennies in. But we are just going to enjoy ourselves and worship God with our hands. Can we get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. Now, with all of that being said, you are invited to silence your cell phone. And all the stress and the worries and all the controversies from the week before, now is the time to set that aside. And as our musicians usher us into a holy space and a holy time, may you welcome the presence of the resurrected Christ. And as one voice, let us join together as we sing our Global Mission theme song. Sunday, what shall we clothe ourselves with? As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, we clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness and humility, meekness and patience. The Apostle Paul encourages us to bear with one another, to forgive one another, and above all else, Humble us, Lord, with your agape love. Bless us and everyone around us, and give them everything they need.
that beautiful melody in our hearts, let us stand for our hymn of preparation. turn to our neighbors and extend to them a sign of grace and welcome. And knowing that we have people watching from home and all over the nation, let us turn to the camera in the back and also extend to them a sign of grace and welcome. And you may face forward. Christ is our advocate, leading us to the light of righteousness, which means no matter what tragic mistakes we may have made, we could take them before Jesus and lay them at his feet. Let us now enter into our own time of silent confession. Knowing that the God who clothes us in righteousness is also the Lord who forgives, let us join together and say, The Lord listens to our hearts, forgives our sins, and shines upon us. We are surrounded by grace and not forgotten. Amen. You may be seated. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. 
and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepare for, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, you that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, um, last week if I was on fire, it was because I hated the scripture that much. <laughs> I don't really hate this scripture. In fact, I rather love it. Except, Sheila, you just did a wonderful gift. You said, as a left-handed person, this scripture made you feel a certain way. And I hope we all heard that. Because to be a compassionate adult means not to dismiss someone's feelings or statements when they say something but to actually sit in it. And we actually know that not that long ago, there would be teachers who would physically hurt children who were left-handed. So this does have a seriousness to it, but you can rest assured that we are not going to focus on the fire and hell and brimstone today because so often that's what people choose to focus on. Today we're going to focus on something different. And what we're going to focus on is the word integrity. So I ask you to please take a moment of prayer with me. Gracious and Holy One, we thank you for this opportunity in which you have gathered us in. And we ask that within this sanctuary, there is no left and there is no right. There is just one and that we are unified in your son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. So the word for today is integrity. I invite you to repeat that word after me. Integrity. integrity. According to the author C.S. Lewis, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching you. Integrity. Doing the right thing even when no one is watching you. Now the reason I know that is because Tuesday evening at the school board meeting for Highlands County, 
a group of students did a presentation on the word integrity and they began the presentation with that quote and they ended with that quote and the reason why is because they were our virtual high school students in which in order for them to be virtual they have to have integrity to do the classwork and the homework and the book reports even though they're not in a physical classroom. So again, <coughs> integrity, as defined by C.S. Lewis, is doing the right thing when no one is watching. Uh -huh. And now that that definition is in place, it offers me the opportunity to humorously look back at last week's sermon. You know, last week's sermon, I shared how much I hated that parable and how I thought the story of the ten women with the ten lamps in which five of them, you know, ran out of oil. I shared how I thought it was so misogynistic and so abusive and I so wish Jesus had not taught that parable. But now after Tuesday night, what I'm starting to realize is that there's a good chance that the lamp that each woman was carrying and the oil was actually meant to represent integrity. That the lamp and the oil was actually meant to represent for us as followers of Christ, are you doing the right thing? And are you willing to do the right thing even when it gets dark? even when no one is watching, even when you're not really sure when the heavenly reward will come. So with that perspective, I feel a little bit more comfortable with last week's reading. I just wish that Jesus had said it in a completely different way. But each of us have a light that burn with inside of us. And each of us have the opportunity to use that light, not because we want accolades or we want rewards or we want to receive grace plus, 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 but to use that light and to let it shine simply because that is the right thing to do. Integrity. Doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Integrity means doing what is just, what is kind, and what is <coughs> humble. But I also had another important lesson that took place Wednesday at our council. I realized that what one person thinks is just, or kind, or humble, may not necessarily be what another person, or what another group of people think is just, kind or humble. So without going into specifics, I went into Wednesday's council meeting with a topic we were going to address. And in my mind, this topic was so clear and I felt that I and I alone knew what the right answer was and that it was going to be a unanimous vote. And it turns out that everyone in the room knew exactly what the answer was. And it was a unanimous vote, but it wasn't the vote that I wanted. <laughs> and you all know me well enough that you know when the unanimous vote was the opposite of what I had anticipated, I became emotional, I became loud, and rightfully so, the members of council felt the courage to say, you're being a bully right now. And to the members of council, I apologize and I hear you. And part of that over emotional response is the reality that oftentimes pastors are like parents that we have a vision in our head of what we believe people should do and when they choose not to do it it can be a bit heartbreaking like a parent for a pastor it could be a bit of a soul suck 
But then it also comes to the reality of being able to pastorally stand back and acknowledge that even though the choice that was made was not one I anticipated, it was a choice that was made with 100% integrity of the entire council. And then realizing that the council's role is to be volunteers who are called to represent the congregation, to make difficult decisions, and the truth is, how often are those decisions based on financial responsibility? So I want to acknowledge that our council has amazing integrity. And what I had the opportunity to learn is that difficult decisions are often going to be made. But you know, as long as we make them for the right reason, with the right bit of information, it is important that we are able to respect and dialogue and move on. Integrity. In many ways, that's what today's scripture is about. And today's scripture, for many of our new members know, is so instrumental in the formation of the United Church of Christ. There is so much of what the UCC does because of this scripture. This scripture gives us our identity as a denomination. But the other important thing about today's reading is that according to Matthew, this is the very last public teaching of Jesus before he is to be arrested. And what an amazing teaching it is that Jesus shares. In this parable, Jesus sets the scene. And the scene is that all the nations of the world come before a king, and the king says to them, I was hungry, and you gave me a slice of cornbread slathered in butter. I was thirsty, and you gave me a cool glass of lemonade. I was a Haitian and a Cuban and a Filipino immigrant, and you welcomed me in. I was wearing rags, and you gave me a t-shirt and underwear and socks. I was at Adventist Health Hospital and in the county jail, and you visited me. And the king says to the nations of the world, come into my land of blessings, for my father's joy covers you. But here's what's really powerful about today's reading. <coughs> what makes today's reading so powerful is that the people who receive this praise and the people who receive this invitation to enter into the Holy Land of the Father are totally confused. I hope you picked up on that. They are absolutely confused. They don't understand what's going on. So they say to the king, but great creator, when did we ever do any of these things for you? You see, the people honestly did not know. The people who did all of these kind, benevolent things did not plan to do any of the things they had done. They were not scrupulous. They were not trying to earn that plus, plus, plus on the grace reward. The people simply just were. In other words, the people had integrity. And so as the people are trying to wrap their head around, when did we do any of these things for you? The king says, anytime you gave anyone a slice of hot cornbread, anytime you gave anyone a cool drink or a warm hello, anytime you gave someone a t-shirt or you sent someone a thinking of you text or you contacted someone who was in jail, you were actually feeding, greeting, clothing, caring for me, and I am so thankful. This message, in my opinion, 
if we ignore the left-handed aspect, is so beautiful. And this message is so pure. And I hope you realize that this is the very last teaching of Jesus, which means this is what Jesus really wants us to focus on. This is what everything else has led up to. And I hope we notice how this lesson about integrity is so free of bylaws and committee work and obligations and the stress of meeting deadlines. And this message is so obtainable by anyone who has an open heart and a truly generous spirit. This is basically God saying to each and every one of us who are in the sanctuary today, did you do anything? Did you do anything that was big or small or medium sized to show someone else that the kingdom of God is real and that heaven is at hand? This is God saying, if you've done anything small, big or large to demonstrate what the heaven of God looks like, then you will experience the good road that God has joyfully placed before you. This is about integrity. This is about God saying, I see you and I see all that you have done because it is the right thing to do. And this is God saying, I am so, so, so proud of you. I think this is what last week's reading really meant to teach us, and Jesus just taught it in a roundabout way. And the reality is, is that through his lifetime, Jesus really didn't make things easy. Jesus didn't always make things clear. Why? Because Jesus wanted us to think for ourselves. But at this moment, at this moment in time, right before he's about to be arrested, at this moment right before his world becomes completely dark and completely dangerous, Jesus leaves us this amazing final lesson. And this lesson ties everything in together. When we do for the least, we do for God. When we are just and when we are kind, we are blessed. When we are generous, we receive the greatest reward imaginable. And when we care for one another, we are actually caring for God. And that makes God happy. And for that, I believe we can say, Amen. 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 Let us now enter into a time of our own silent reflection. So we normally do prayers during this time, but we're going to do something a little bit different. As you know, we have a prophet amongst us who <coughs> continues to make my life a little bit difficult and uneasy, as a prophet is supposed to, and that is Clay Benedict. And if you recall a few months ago, he challenged us to actually show care and compassion for people in Somalia, something that I just did not understand. But because of your generosity, and because of the way the Holy Spirit has moved, Clay has been inspired to be prophetic once again, and both him and Gail have brought to our church and to our council a pop-up ministry that council has approved joyfully. And here is what the pop-up ministry is. <clears throat> Clay has had this vision of collecting tins. 
and lunch boxes and fashioning them with holes and applying stickers onto them and bringing these tins and these lunch boxes into local establishments all throughout Highlands County and asking business owners and shopkeepers if they can be placed by the register. And the tins are designed to feed the people of Shepherd's Pantry as well as to feed people in Somalia. The vision that Clay has is to invite the community to do mission local and do mission international. And Clay, this is a wonderful opportunity. This is a ministry he's done up north. It's a ministry that has proven to be effective. It is a ministry that we're gonna start around November or December. But one of the reasons why we're sharing it right now is that there's a role for each and every person here to play during spring and summer. We are asking you to go to the thrift stores or to the Goodwill or to Habitat for Humanity or any place you want and if you see any kind of decorative tin or any kind of lunchbox that catches your attention to so please purchase it and bring it to church. And then when Clay and Gail come back in November, instead of a noodle making night, we are going to have a tin making night. And we are asking people who have tools to contact Clay so we can make holes in the tins and then we can secure them. And then here's the part where you come in. We're gonna need about 30 individuals who are willing to take the responsibility of one of these lunch boxes or one of these tins, bring it to one of the local stores, and to simply set it up. And then a few times each year, we will gather that money, and 50% of it will go to the Shepherd's Pantry, 50% of it will go to Somalia. So Clay, thank you for being prophetic. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for yet another way in which we can do something that we know God will smile about. Can we get an amen? Amen. 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 And now let us join in a moment of prayer. Gracious and Holy One, we give thanks. We give thanks for each and every individual who is here. We give thanks for the opportunity to do ministry both local and national and international. We give thanks that you are a God who doesn't ask for more than we can bear. But you are a God who simply asks for integrity, for justice, for kindness, and humility. Holy One, you know our prayers. You know that we continue to lift up our brother Hardrick. You know that we are praying for our sisters and brothers of Mississippi. And we continue to lift up those in the Ukraine and those in Somalia and those in Haiti. And we continue to lift up places like Kokoria Pines that are making sure that those without a home are able to receive the shelter they deserve. And Lord, we thank you for the work of our council, knowing that the choices are rarely easy, but they are making these choices with pure integrity and love for Emmanuel UCC, for Highlands County, and for the kingdom of God. It is in your son's name we pray and we say,
they go through private pain Leaving fear to fear Laughter hides their silent cries Only Jesus Troubled all week by hearing 
last week from Eileen that we were $4,000 short. And I know that significant cuts have already been made. I also know that when I go to Aldi's and buy what used to be $100 worth of groceries, I get half as much. Or when we go out for lunch, it costs another 10 or $15 than it did last year. But the truth is, in this organization called church, we're the responsible ones. It's all voluntary. And we're the only ones that can make a difference. I hope that you will be able to rethink what you're giving to our church and that you'll be able to increase it even just a little so that we can fill those gaps, that we don't have to cut staff because everything else has already been cut. I just ask you to do the best you can. Thank you.
Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you know, part of our Shepherd's Pantry program is that every month we have a specific food item that we ask people to bring in all month long. And then at the end of the month, we bless the items. This month, it was Snack Ramen. And as you can see, we probably have all the ramen noodles that exist in all of Highland County. <laughs> so I'm going to ask that you please extend your hands so that we can bless this food together. Gracious and Holy One, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the bounty of the earth. And we give thanks for the ways in which you present opportunities for us to give. May you bless this food. May you especially bless these noodles, knowing that it is often our children and our youth and those who are at home while their parents are working who will eat this meal. May your love continue to surround us. May the words of Jesus Christ continue to inspire us. And may the ministry of the Shepherd's Pantry and our upcoming ministry with Somalia be a blessing to all. It is in your son's name we pray and we say. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We especially want to send a message to Diane and her sister Betty as they are watching and may they know that the love of Christ continues to surround them. Amen. A reminder that we have brunch immediately after worship open for all delicious breakfast casseroles and cinnamon rolls and quiches. Um, please during the week look out for tins and look out for lunch boxes. You can start bringing them in and put them onto the table in the narthex. And Clay, if it's okay with you, I'll start collecting them and keeping them in the office. So that way when uh, Clay and Gail come back in November, we can start turning them into our ministry. Also a reminder, next week, not only bring in your per capita check, which is $15 per member, but also bring in your percussive instruments, your sound makers, your coffee cans, your maracas. And if you have none of that, guess what? You have hands 
and you got fingers that can make noises. We are so looking forward to worshiping for Palm Sunday, welcoming in Christ, welcoming our conference minister, and preparing for the Easter that is to arrive. Um, final message, if housing and the ministry of housing is something that matters to you or you want to learn more about, you want to talk to Dean in the back row, he is the man in Highlands County who is making sure that our citizens have a roof over their head and the work he's doing on behalf of our people and with Highway Park is just so commendable. Dean, thank you for doing the work you're doing and for the integrity that you are demonstrating. Can we give him a round of applause? And of course, our Queen, Carnine, congratulations. Amen. And Doreen, safe journeys as you leave for Canada tomorrow, and happy birthday. Let us please stand for our benediction. And I ask that you extend your hand so that you bless us as we are blessing you. As we prepare to leave this holy space and to leave this holy time, may we know that we are clothed in the garments of righteousness. And with that knowledge, may we all find our own ways to do what is just, to do what is kind, to do what is humble, not because we are seeking a reward, but because it is the right thing to do. And with the spirit of spiritual integrity, may we all go in peace, justice, and love. Amen. Amen.